champions of 2020. By Leverkusen still unbeaten and already crowned the champions of uh, that is the Bundesliga. Now a very good one for Xabi Alonso who also extended his uh, contract with this team. Uh, that's the only team in Europe that has not yet lost uh, to any any club or has not lost in any league game and they are now aiming at going for a treble because they already threw as champions of the Bundesliga. We shall be discussing about that transfer speculations internationally is also moving right there. Now, of course, Susie, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Owen. Uh, good afternoon, uh, viewer. We're already in the house and uh, I should say the house is full house. Don't expect when someone says full house, you should be seeing a lot of people and all that know. Uh, for us, as long as uh, the real hosts are in the house, we say full house and uh, we are here to, of course, uh, give you everything uh, within sports. Yesterday we were in Koboko, we brought to you uh, all the actions there and I would also be uh, discussing uh, some of uh, the activities uh, that happened uh, down there with a lot of uh, whatever it is that to go down at the one hour as uh, our uh, co uh, colleague host has uh, given us. Yes, of course, it's Amvara and uh, of course Moyo High, uh, Moyo Stars High. Uh, it says that of course uh, shined in the day uh, probably for uh, that is uh, uh, the USA or the, uh, the yes, the USA uh, zone qualifiers this time around in the West Nile region or the West Nile zone. You did see all the schools that turned up in there uh, couldn't make, but of course, three teams will be uh, representing. Uh, that is the the, 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 the region uh, to the nationals. And now, of course, we also did see Nyangilia going against Kochi yesterday in the third playoff, where, of course, uh, Kochi emerged the champions of uh, that is uh, the game after beating, of course, Nyangilia uh, to advance to that is uh, the third playoff. Uh, so that means uh, they were also in that category uh, joining now the team of Paida and uh, Mvara in there. But all in all, let's start with the overview of the game. It was a tense one. You did see Mvara, of course, after playing with Kochi, their remaining four minutes, uh, they again had to play in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that is the finals at 2 p.m. A tough one it was. Uh, you did see Mvara, of course, uh, scoring two goals uh, and had a solid, uh, solidity in their team and still Samson Sizokuti makes another name or adds something into his CV after, of course, uh, being um, uh, the coach of Leo, making sure they promote them. He promoted them, then became coach of Onduparaka. Onduparaka is now with the drum team. After the drum team, the school football, he has also become a champion. Some good years, I think 15 or some years back, that Mvara has not become champions of. That is the region. Now they have again become champions uh, right there once again. They, are, they were champions here in Arua this, uh, City. Now they also became champions in the region. How good is that for Mvara SS and the coach himself, Samson Sizokuti? Um, it's quite a very good one um, uh, for the coach, uh, there is a Samson Sizokuti. I think uh, it's literally good that uh, he's adding on a lot. He's achieving in a lot, by the way, wherever he's placed. Um, uh, with Ondu Parka, yes, um, uh, he's, he's quite doing so, so well, I should say. Uh, starting with Leo, like you had uh, given us uh, his entire journey over there is a uh, coaching. Uh, but he did quite so well and literally uh, right now where he is, I should say, no one beats uh, there is a Samson Sizo Kuchi or Kuti for the fact that uh, as a coach, if you come through and uh, be champions overall, of course in Aurora City, he was the overall champion, beating uh, there is a, uh, the defending champions of last year, there is Aurora SS. And then also um, uh, going to uh, regionals, you also uh, beat uh, there is uh, the defending champions uh, that were uh, Aurora SS, uh, they were eliminated in the quarters. And then are going through to play finals with other is a a very tough one. Um, uh, yeah, we saw the game was very tense. By the, of course, I tried to outplay other is um, a senior secondary school, but then. Um, I think uh, Caesar's skills literally helped in these guys. We saw them come through with an early lead there in first half, and then also uh, the second half saw them uh, come through with another goal that ended the run for there is a pay there and it 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 it's it was quite a very good one for there is a very senior secondary school and then also a uh, samson i think a, a, a lot of uh, positive achievements can literally lift you so so high uh this makes every other person uh, want to work out with you here and there and all that so basically it's a both a plus for um, a senior secondary school and samson siso kuti and uh, i would like to say from a whistle time desk and a west nail tv we congratulate uh, the both sides yeah exactly we congratulate the both sides are right there. I loved the display of uh, Paida uh, as a uh, captain. Of course, he was so fantastic in that team. At the same time, we did look at uh, shirt number two uh, for that is uh, Paida, who of course had a lot 
He even got a knock, but still he came back into the team uh, trying to prove something into that is the team. If you look at uh, the shirt number two, he was called, um, his name was uh, uh, called uh, Opakrioth. Godwin. He was outstanding, Mr. Uh, of course, uh, Pacrioth, because you look at um, what his displays were. He was the creative player into the Pyther team, and uh, the Pyther team really pried so, so much to see that they really needed to come back. Yes, they pulled one back in a 2-1 a victory that came through, but still couldn't really, really make sure that things work uh, their way because uh, the team of, uh, of, of, of Mvara became so solid in the defense. Yes, in the, in the final five minutes, they were the better side, I should say, the, the, the team of Pida SS, but things were not their way. And uh, with, of course, uh, the lankiness in uh, the defense of uh, the team um, Vara SS, you couldn't expect to concede goals in there. I expected them to go with a clean sheet, but of course, that shows you that uh, this team, or uh, this school, still has ambitions. Next time you could see them progress or become the champions the because champions, uh, yeah. if that the, the, this whole set of uh, the players still remain in the league, then you would be seeing a competitive one. A, stro a strong journey uh, because both teams, I expected them to be in the finals because their way through has been so smooth from even their uh, districts or cities uh, reaching into the zones. Uh, they were also beating teams or beating schools, ejecting them and that shows you that uh, this team deserved to be right uh, into that is the team. But of course, the man by the names of, uh, uh, that is uh, Mr. Daniel, uh, was one key name. Then Abdul Hanan, uh, whom very many call as, uh, uh, he, his name has been nicknamed as Adama. Abdul Hanan was also very prolific for that is the team of Vanvara. Yes, yes, because he is the man that you could be talking about uh, every time for Vara. Physically, he's okay. Uh, the, 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 the goal scoring ability is there because yesterday he was one of the names who of course got into the school sheet uh, for the team. Even in the school football he was their top scorer uh, in, the, in, in, in that is uh, the, 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 the city's uh, games. You did see him being the top scorer. Then of course in the, re, in, in the, in the zones he has also proven to see that he can rescue his team and that is a very good thing for me to Vara um, SS and we could be expecting uh, to see them perform very good now three teams will be representing West Nile in the in the nationals with of course Vara champions runners up as uh, by the SS and then of course you will be seeing also the team of Kochi representing uh, that is uh, West Nile in the zones uh, straight away um, if you look at the girls' side that started early, because it started at around 1, uh, you saw the team of Biaya taking on Moyo High, uh, well, uh, of course, SS, Moyo Stars High, which was a very good one. Now, I have watched the games of football of ladies. The last time I watched was in, in Maracha District, where you did see uh, the team of, uh, uh, the team that was from, Mo, uh, from uh, let's say, the Madisa region, were doing very good. Very, very good. And this time around, you would even see in the finals, these teams were still from the Madi region mm -hmm. or Madi sub region that came through to still battle it up. So it was a, uh, a derby, I should say, in the finals. Moyo and, of course, Biaya still tried fighting it high. Biaya should be in uh, Germany. Uh, I've never gone up to that school. But for Moyo, uh, here, they tried their level best and became, uh, they, they, they scored very fast to make sure that uh, uh, they, they, they became the champions of, uh, that is the zono. So here we go. Um, Moyo, did you see that? Uh, because the teams like uh, Diofe could now not handle the pressure and the situation <laughs> at Kobo. Um, Diofe was ejected at the semi-finals, I should say, and um, uh, they did play for uh, the third place playoffs and uh, they merged the winners. Mm. Uh, so basically, the, uh, in the St. Mary's Diofe girls will be joining uh, the two sides, uh, that is Abiyaya and uh, Moyo Star to go in uh, for the Nationals. And uh, for the boys, they'll be going to Masaka. And uh, talking about the girls, um, uh, St. Mary's tried. Yeah, they really tried, but then um, uh, the, 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 that goal, uh, the game uh, between St. Mary's Idiofe and uh, Moyo Star ended on a 2-1. So basically, that to me is not a very bad one. If you're able to score, at, and even if trail at uh, your opponent's uh, goal scores, trust me, it's quite a very good one, it's quite a very impressive one. But then, uh, I think uh, Moyo Star just uh, literally outplayed Idiofe in the speed and experience bit of it. Because if you look at uh, Moyo Star as they're playing Idiofe girls, and then also coming through to finals to play 
Alvaro is Biaya and uh, over running Biaya, uh, literally I tried to do uh, a few research and I, uh, I was told uh, that uh, in uh, that sub-region, um, uh, football uh, for girls is uh, preferred over there is a netball and uh, that's why the girls really outshined. And uh, for Moyesta, I think uh, the MVP was uh, the, 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 the captain. She really, uh, she really, really led by example, truly as being a captain. She scored the first goal and uh, they are two in their team. There was one girl called Caroline and then uh, there was the other one. Uh, who had a muddy name that I skipped off my mind. Uh, they had, uh, they were the top uh, top scorers. By the way, they both had five goals, uh, meaning our captain over there is a Moyesta and also one key girl in uh, that very team. They yes. both were tied on two. Uh, there is uh, the top scorers, five five. So basically, it's quite a very good one, quite very impressive that uh, our own region is literally also now trying to embrace. Uh, there is a uh, football. Uh, the likes of Vara, the likes of uh, 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 the rest of the schools that are literally uh, joined in from here to, to, to the regionals really had a lot to learn, especially from the side of the girls and that uh, those that actually made it through uh, to go to, uh, there is uh, the, the, the nationals, there is uh, Biaya, um, uh, Moyo Star High and uh, St. Mary's Idiofe, I should say they should equally also go there to learn. They should be able to go there and uh, pick a leaf from whatever it is that they'll see the other side. I believe that uh, football, the other side is going to be more tense and it's going to be very tight with a lot of experiences to learn. Yeah, experiences to learn exactly and that's one big thing uh, that you should be uh, preparing in for because uh, if you prepare right now uh, teams are still going back to prepare uh, because uh, schools have to deliver uh, to see that they get to where they want to be uh, probably representing in the nationals you're now going to the cream de la creams who are right there remember it is said that after representing there you still will be representing in the East African uh, games that will also take you so that means the seriousity is to be implemented but looking at all this you could see uh, um, i was told moyo has also some of the ladies who play in the under 17 and i think under 15 in the national team in the uh, uh, junior team so that's why they were so outstanding and very very good uh, right there but all in all let's look at uh, this the schools that we have mentioned about do you see are uh, the hopes of west nile uh, schools progressing in the nationals uh, depending on the play and depending on how other leagues how other schools have performed in different districts uh, that will be coming uh, in uh, the nationals um uh, trust me um at the levels of uh, where most of other uh, schools have reached in or uh, the type of play that they are into uh, a lot of other coaches that are in these different schools have learned a lot and they have a lot of experiences by the way that uh, they literally have to put out there and instill into the young talent that they are nurturing that they want to grow up and basically achieve in a lot in the future um so uh, basically Basically, uh, if you've watched all these games, if you've been following all these games, trust me, um, uh, you'd be able to understand that uh, actually uh, all these people are promising. And for the fact that uh, uh, some of them are already representing in, 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 in the junior team and all that, um, I was also told that uh, most of these girls are from uh, the Great Madi region uh, in both schools also have uh, clubs the other side mm -hmm. that they play in for much as they are students. So basically, uh, that should tell us that... Uh, they have a very high experience and uh, they are doing so so well so uh, based on that um, uh, if, if if all that is rounded down trust me these girls have a very bright future if they are handled well trust me they are yet young the talent is growing and they are they are basically are slated in for higher things all right you can be part of it what do you think about west nile schools that are going to represent west nile that means schools six schools will be representing i uh, the boys category i just did mention to you, Mvara and uh, Paida SS, and not forgetting, of course, the team of Kochi SS. And at the same time, for the girls, you have Biaya, you have Amoyo, the champions, and at the same time, a Diofe. What do you think? Drop your message in the comment box. We will be reading uh, wherever you're following from. We shall mention and tell us probably where you're following the show from and uh, your comment uh, in there. Do you think West Nile clubs uh, will progress in the nationals? Uh, I'm talking about the use of all the, the, uh, the ball games uh, for the schools. And now you will be giving us your uh, comment and, of course, dropping it right there. Keep watching West Nile Television for all these updates because we did promise you that we shall be giving you this until the last day, until the last dot over the USA games uh, this year 2024. Now, when we leave that there, we also have uh, 
talks about uh, one of uh, the biggest uh, things that is happening in that is uh, the country. Now remember, different games are taking place at different uh, venues and at different places. Now let's turn our focus this time round to the West Nile Regional League. Where Arua City yesterday, I'm told that they showed emotions at, at least at a pie that after they had lost by two goals uh, to nil. Even interview with journalists, journalists was very hard for them and they couldn't really find out who is who and what exactly is there. But they lost the game, two goals to nil. Paida, I should say, are only one game away, one win away to make sure that they can uh, they, 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 they become the bosses, probably, <laughs> or the champions uh, someone could, could announce right there over the Nyagak zone. What do you think about the regional league and the performance of Pai the Black Angels? Um, uh, I think uh, Pai the Black Angels has uh, has been fighting so hard. Uh, they literally started in uh, this fight from uh, the first day of uh, the result of the regional league games. And uh, our own uh, Rua City traveling to uh, Barokoro to play there is a Pai the Black Angels. I literally saw that they were going to lose in this game. I had, uh, uh, I had a chat with uh, I had a chat with a few of their players who literally told me they were not seeing themselves win so basically uh, so the mindset was already off oh, exactly uh, so basically going to Barukuru but everyone looks at that place as a death trap I don't know why like uh, Paruku uh, those days uh, how green light like, used to be so uh, basically uh, going there to lose in that very game is quite a very bad one uh, for Arua City but then looking at by the Black Angels they've 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 always had the fighting spirit and I think this time around uh, they reorganized themselves we saw that when the season just started from management level up to down grassroots so I think uh, they had one focus that they are achieving. Literally, they want to move. Uh, they want to move out of regional league. They've been there for quite some time, and they have also tested the waters of uh, the biggest style of football in Uganda. So I think basically they feel where they are right now is where they don't belong. They literally have to go up there where they feel that is their place. Yeah, which is okay. Of course, one of the biggest things to talk about uh, for a serious club, you need to have uh, targets. You need to have set goals for yourself uh, and achieve them at the last end in their. Pakwach tried pushing it harder to see that they are going for that battle and they are still in the race because I don't want to say that they are out of the race. They are still also fighting in that race. A team that I would always want to say is uh, Nebi Central, but this time around the vibe is not there. Even the publicity of Nebi, by the way, has dropped because those days at least you would see more of Pai, uh, Nebi Central talks. Uh, but this time around the publicity has dropped because things I think are not working well. I'm meant to know that the management has been split into two in Nebi Central, where of course Nebi, uh, even those who were there, uh, uh, had fights amongst themselves. Uh, uh, so which has costed, that means there's two-way uh, management in there, uh, which always in football, when you're not speaking the same language, trust me, you're doomed to fail, and that is going to be one of the biggest challenges that you're going to be facing right there. And that's what is uh, stro uh, stretching uh, the team of uh, Nebi Central right there. One of the favorites you we were talking about, but now things are not their way. Uh, Rural City also uh, still the same. Uh, the management and, of course, the council, that fight is still too big and which has failed to bridge up. Otherwise, you would be seeing them uh, probably become champions also or become closer to, uh, to, 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 to battle with uh, the teams uh, right there. So it's, it's, it's so, 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 so embarrassing. You've seen them recently. They had won away and come back. Probably we expected the vibe to be higher and make sure that things work. But it's not the way we expected. So Arua City, yes, lost the game yesterday. Um, unless there are other regional league uh, results that maybe you could be uh, close to, but that was one of the biggest. Um, uh, Alpha Rising Stars, I should say, have returned to the result of their winning ways. Um, uh, they now acquired, uh, after uh, the last time we checked, uh, their coach was Adiga Morris, who uh, was sacked uh, literally in between. I think uh, they have been under uh, they have been under a caretaker and uh, recently they acquired in uh, the services of um, uh, Hamza Olema. Olema. Yes, they acquired in the services is over Hamza Olema and uh, recently in office Hamza Olema I think uh, this weekend had to beat the team of Zeu seven goals and uh, <laughs> in uh, that defeat they were of course in Panduru and after scoring the seventh goal uh, I saw the team of uh, Zeu Central uh, those that were on the touchline are uh, calling in of uh, their players and uh, surprisingly they uh, surprisingly they walked off the pitch 
uh, mm. because they couldn't take the humiliation further. I think uh, that was uh, because of the seven goals and uh, this was yet in the 66th minute. So they anticipated that uh, if, of course, um, they had moved further and finished the 90 minutes, maybe they would have collected uh, more than uh, 10 goals or so. So uh, basically that is uh, one key result that I was able to land on over the weekend as well. Okay, that's one of the biggest that you should be talking about uh, right there. But all in all, um, we have two, uh, two, three things that you should be uh, learning from these games because uh, Araka, also that side, uh, men to know yesterday were doing very good in a tough uh, uh, decision maker. Uh, so we're yet to see how this could be pushing harder. Uh, but uh, the regional league still continues with, of course, uh, interested uh, uh, fixtures uh, uh, probably to talk about right there. Now, in the FUFA Big League, we also had uh, games that went through as uh, Chetume also held the team of Lugazi into a 1-1 one -one all draw. A struggling Chetume had that against Lugazi. How bad is that for Lugazi? Um, uh, I think uh, it's quite a very bad one for uh, uh, for uh, Lugazi uh, because uh, Chetume literally we've been seeing them suffering and uh, they have uh, picked in a lot of uh, defeat. So uh, basically, if uh, they have returned uh, back to, to to their winning ways uh, with this very one uh, with this very uh, win that they picked, I think it's quite a very good one. I was, by the way, surprised that uh, they actually uh, uh, they actually played the one one uh, with uh, there is uh, Lugazi, which I actually didn't. Expect. I expected Lugazi to, by the way, beat in uh, Chetume because if you look at uh, both uh, their positions on uh, there is other uh, table standings, you literally see that uh, uh, Lugazi and uh, Chetume, okay, Lugazi actually I think also sits in a better position. Lugazi is at position number two and Chetume is down in relegation position number 12. So applying in that 1-1 one -one was a big shocker. I expected Lugazi to push past Chetume in a very smooth way uh, because if you look at uh, Chetume's recent runs, they have not been quite a very good one. But again, tying, uh, uh, but we already say the kicks of a dying horse are uh, quite very hard. And uh, teams right now that sit top of the table should be very, very careful when they are going to play teams that are down there. They might bite and bite you so bad. Exactly. Now, of course, this gets uh, to one of the best things. And police uh, probably still leads the table with... Uh, a very good go, uh, difference of 43 after winning yesterday against Calvary also. A, a very tight game it was. They came up to Midigo and got a, uh, three points uh, or got the maximum points. What's wrong with Calvary? <laughs> Whatever it is that is taking place with Calvary, you just don't understand. And each day they keep sinking and sinking. The other time, uh, the last time I checked in, uh, the last time I checked the table standings, Calvary and Onduparaka were following each other. I think Onduparaka was at a, a position number eight, and Calvary was at either position number nine or nine, and eight. yeah, it was eight and nine. And Onduparaka is winning. This is the third time they are winning in a row ever since um, uh, the last time they suffered a defeat in Bali in the hands of Avery Zakataka. So uh, basically, Calvary, I literally don't understand whatever it is that is happening to them. And they are sinking each and every day. Their performance keeps dropping each and every day. Could it be the players? Could it be the management? If there was a problem in the uh, management, trust me, um, uh, would, we wouldn't be seeing them honoring away fixtures. Maybe they would attribute that to financial issues and all that. But here they are honoring in away fixtures, are uh, hosting in those that are basically are coming home. But then even... They, these days fail to pick a win at home, not even one. So there is something that is happening at the camp of Calvary. So far so good, 21 games played and Calvary winning seven of those, uh, probably losing 11 and drawing three. That's so, so worrying uh, for a club like Calvary right there. They are just, uh, I should say, they are only four points away. Uh, two, that is the relegation. That means any game lost again and a team wins, it takes you closer to the relegation zone or you even go to the relegation because uh, that's one thing uh, but uh, only that uh, they are also having negative goals that means they what was where is the energy that used to be there in the first round to second round because first round calvary had every energy that you would see this is the club that will be competing uh, 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 but second round it is not the way that we expected and things are not going well uh, if you to look at the statistics, how many games have they lost in second half? How many games have they won so far in there? You would say around seven games already played, but how many wins have they got? That makes you 
ask questions. But all in all, uh, that's the team uh, that, of course, is there, Calvary. They are sitting at number 10. On, uh, that is uh, the log right there. Yesterday, we also did see other games, by the way. Uh, Chinda boys also won their game against Karo Karunji by two goals at one right there. It was an away, uh, I mean, a home win. Karo Karunji was away, but they managed to, to squat at least a goal. Uh, for that is uh, uh, against the home team. That means they are not all that bad. And that is one big thing that you should be uh, looking into uh, right there. Now, this is a tough contest right there. Karo Karunji faces next the team of uh, Unduparaka Football Club. But Chiinda, still one team that maybe you would say if drops points, that gives an upper hand to uh, the Unduparaka team won also yesterday right in the game. And then Mbale Heroes uh, played a goalless draw without a coach of... Uh, uh, the other caliber now, things have started uh, going, uh, of course, a uh, wrong way for them, I should say, because draw is not <laughs> the best one against mm -hmm. Boma. And they and, were uh, home. They were home, so it shows you that, uh, obviously, Asaf Mwebaz's impact is already uh, uh, being felt that he was doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, here they play a draw, and then Chetume had 1-1 one -one with Bugazi, as also the team of uh, Unduparaka. I played against uh, the team of Ginger North, and that was three goals to one against uh, Ginger North. As Kataka had played Young Elephant before at Kataka's home ground in Mbale Municipal Grounds, it was 1-0 in favor of, uh, that is, uh, Kataka Football Club. Kataka now sits third. Are we seeing them in the Uganda Premier League? Or someone would be saying, maybe let them go to Uganda Premier League and we see what comes next. Because I remember the last time they were kicked off. Um, uh, Kataka has uh, literally struggled. I also had to see to it that uh, they get back up there. And uh, this time around, I'm uh, having a third position. By the way, a lot of people are eyeing in that position. Um, uh, trust me, um, I would say um, uh, Mbale Heroes is eyeing that position. Position. Uh, Black Power is eyeing that position. Boma is eyeing that position. Onduparaka is also eyeing that position. So it's quite a very uh, Even uh, exactly. Boys. It's quite a very huge, a very huge competition for that position. So uh, for now, Kataka sitting in that position, I should say, uh, it is. It's yet a little bit shaky. We can't, uh, we can't literally uh, say that. Yeah, this is now a, a, a signed, stamped, sealed deal. That yeah, they have uh, pulled through. And, and and all that no they are still uh, but to me they are still going to suffer by the way moreover these results that they attained recently based on what has been happening in uh, their squad are picking playing in a zero zero at home without the coach trust me the absence of the coach is beginning to bite them okay we are going to take a break when we come back we shall be discussing other stories right here on west nile television but you can still keep dropping your comments and being a part of the show right on west nile television let's take a break We'll be right back. TV, lighting up the region.
West Nile TV, lighting up the region. From that break and of course uh, still west nile television uh, live uh, on uh, your screen uh, wherever you are uh, probably following uh, the show from i want to say thank you so much for keeping it at uh, west nile television now in uh, uganda cup we also did see games taking up of course uh, uh i should say break after teams that expected not to go out or bow out bowed out and of course one of the biggest was the home team pakwach uh, yeah, youngsters were, of course, ejected by Pajule Lions, and that really meant very, very big. Pajule Lions uh, did the beat Pakwach uh, from their home ground, uh, uh, that side. Uh, Pakwach tried everything possible, but it didn't work out. Uh, and then uh, we did also see yesterday Bull and Kessis here uh, also having a game. And uh, Viper Sports Club also were another that went against Chitara, and uh, Chitara had to say, you guys, pack and go and that is what <laughs> happened paul Mucherezi was the scorer for that is uh, the, 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 the 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 jitara side to decide everything in the penalties right there post uh, post match penalties meant very big for chitara now chitara uh bull football club uh pajule uh, lions and uh, uh which other team is this um uh, yes those are so far three teams that means we left one more team uh, to make sure that they get into uh, the games. But Suzy, let's first start with the Pakwachi game. Tough it was, I should say, maybe, for Pakwachi. And uh, a slim win means very big for them and they're out of the league. So focus back to the regional league. Um, uh, Pakwach youngsters uh, literally tried uh, they traveled to Padir. Um, uh, I think uh, 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 fatigue uh, kind of tried uh, but was one of the factors I would say uh, because um, uh, they were supposed to travel two days before uh, but then uh, due to financial constraints they moved in uh, actually on the night of uh, there is, uh, b b b the following day was supposed to be the game and they reached 11 p.m. and over so uh, basically, for Pakwachi, first half ended on a 0-0, zero, zero. then second half, we saw them being uh, disorganized in the 60th minute, where in uh, Pajule came through with a goal. But Pajule being home, literally, um, all odds were uh, favoring uh, there is a Pajule. They were home in Pajule. So, uh, basically, P Pakwachi had to bow out over there is a Stanbic Uganda Cup in there, uh, in the quarterfinals. But uh, I would say uh, that was a very huge one, by the way, oh, and for a regional league side to move that far. Uh, last year, uh, but we saw it was a big league side uh, from West Nile that moved that mm, far mm. Uh, up to the semis. I think they were eliminated by Express in there. And at this time around, a regional league side going to uh, that far quarterfinals of Uganda Cup, it's a very huge one uh, for uh, there is a Pakwachi. Much as they bow out, I think uh, they have all the experiences and uh, they've made in a name in the books of Uganda and all that. So it's quite a very huge one. And then also uh, coming to uh, there is a Bulkesie. <laughs> that was a very huge one. We saw them finishing on a 1-1 one -one and then uh, they went into penalties and um, uh, we saw uh, Bakesie bowing out literally as well. All right. then, now, of course, we did also see Chitara having yep. a very good hour against the Viper Sports Club and uh, it wasn't their day Vipers uh, they are out and now that Mbabas is not there I, do, I, I want to know where they're going to take their angers too because Mbabas is not in the team <laughs> Neck is another team I was talking about because they had won against the uh, Police Football Club that was the first game of uh, the, uh, the Uganda, pre uh, Uganda Cup which of course means uh, that they are out and now we have Neck, we have Chitara we have uh, team uh, uh, Pajule Lions and uh, the team of Bull Football Club that will be facing off in that is the semi-finals now who is facing who or what is facing what or which club is facing which club is now the question we're waiting for and seeing how this will be right there but of course it is 
a tough one now to decide where do you see this trophy going? It's very hard to decide right now because um, uh, the sides that actually I anticipated to win in the quarters were all ejected and uh, it's, it, it, the results came through the other round. So basically I think I want to leave this uh, into the hands You're of... You're already uh, scared. Uh, uh, Chitar is good. Bull is good. Um, I'm seeing Pajule getting out of the league. Exactly. Um, the same is, yeah. uh, uh, Neck, Neck is, is good. good. <laughs> and uh, you're seeing uh, now there, that means this is where you're going to be. So it will depend on which team is going to face what. Which team is going to face which team. Uh, we're waiting for those draws uh, probably to come at one and see what comes in there. But a very bad one for teams like KCC and Vipers. In fact, these are two teams that have been fighting so much. Chitara, for the first time in history, they have also reached up the semi-finals mm -hmm. of uh, that is, uh, the league. So it adds in at least value to them uh, to see that this is it. But Uganda Cup, yes, that's where we close. Also, Uganda Premier League, by the way, is uh, going to be on tomorrow with a couple of games. I can uh, confirm to you the games that will be there tomorrow uh, in uh, Uganda Premier League. Yes, a couple of games that are going to be there for that is, uh, teams to also participate in. Uh, because uh, if you look at uh, different uh, games that have also shown uh, um, way through, you would say it is the time to see that uh, teams focus on now the league games. Uh, because league games give you uh, the chance, they give you uh, what you need to push. But all in all, if you don't again pay attention to the games, then you have. So I, there's no going to be any excuse that uh, maybe my team did not perform because uh, uh, you, we were in this, we were in that. No. Concentrate on your games right there and win this game. So tomorrow, a couple of games, UPDF will be fighting it again against Gaddafi, 4 p.m. URA will be welcoming NEC at 4 p.m. These are two games that will be played tomorrow. On Thursday, there shall be also a game uh, with, of course, Maroons taking on Busoga United. Cases here welcoming Marara City. On Friday, we shall be seeing Kitara taking on a Vipers and Bull taking on Express as Sports Club Villa will welcome Soltilo Bright Stars on Sunday. Again, another one. Vipers, Kitara will again go. Vipers is again traveling back to Kitara in their home ground yet again, where the fan base was very massive. To see that they tussle it out in the Uganda Premier League. And the other one was Uganda Cup, now it's Uganda I think uh, Vipers just needed to remain. <laughs> uh, but they had, uh, they, they, they played a Chitara, on, uh, was it yesterday or something like that? And then that was in Uganda Cup, like you said. And then the next is um, uh, in uh, a certain Uganda Premier League, also against the same team. So I think they just needed to remain there and uh, finish all uh, the business with Chitara. Before well, they still they, have they, to they, Thursday so they, they can... <laughs> They can come home. <laughs> okay, we go away from there and wind our. Uh, we need to wind our show with uh, international stories, where of course a lot of things are also happening. Arsenal yesterday was beaten uh, by Aston Villa. Onai Emery, the former coach of Arsenal, uh, seems to be one coach who is giving headache to Arsenal in uh, these games. And up to now, they couldn't believe Zichenko, um, Kai Havertz were not in the game according to what exactly has uh, come out from different pundits in that is the world. Now, what went wrong for Arsenal? Um, uh, first of all, uh, I would uh, literally say that uh, Unai Emery, uh, of course, uh, tactically did beat, uh, there is a, uh, did beat Mikel uh, Arteta in there, uh, to which I think uh, uh, but some of the subs that uh, Unai Emery quite did uh, forced are uh, foster foster there is a, a Twitter to also do uh, some little bit of subs which to me uh, he did hit his brain so so dead and uh, he literally didn't know how to catch up with a tactical a bit of it that Unai Emery's side had applied and that's why we saw uh, to me uh, where the mistakes came from when Arsenal even failed to score a goal and uh, we saw them being beaten in uh, that way. Arsenal, uh, if you see uh, the midfield, the functionality is always not there, and then you are going to be seeing trouble. Uh, Martinelli, uh, if, uh, not Martinelli, but Gabriel, uh, of course, uh, uh, that is uh, the, 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 the player who always gives them Odegaard. Uh, when Odegaard is not into the play, and then just expect a lot uh, from that is Arsenal, because uh, Declan Rice was uh, into the play. Odegaard was a good one, but things did not work well. Havertz was a dull guy. 
Trossard started the game, they asked him, Ateta, why did you start Trossard? He said, because he is the manager of the team. He decides all the lineups. Um, Saka, uh, of course, you would see one side of Arsenal's uh, flank working. This was where Ben White, uh, Maritin Odegaard, and Kyle Saka. But the rest, like uh, Zichenko's wing, Kai Havertz, and Trossard, were not into the game, uh, which, of course, gave a hard time. There were only two functional uh, midfielders in that team. Uh, Declan Rice performed to his expectation, but of course uh, Martin Odegaard. Now, for the team of uh, Aston Villa, everybody was hard working because this is what they knew. They were at Emirates, where there's a lot of noise and needed to perform. Konsa was outstanding in that defense. Uh, Carlos was outstanding in that defense. Uh, Torres was very, very good in that defense, including Dini Lucas, who was very good. In the midfield, you saw a pivotal two uh, midfielders who were there, McGinney and Yuri Telemans, uh, who were all into the play for that is the team of Aston Villa. And indeed, Yuri Telemans performed a star player uh, performance uh, right uh, yesterday. He was, in fact, the star player. And he was, to me, the man of the match because giving an assist uh, and keeping the midfield so compact that you could see even the and rest of the players wouldn't move for him. And, uh, of course, Azaniolo also being outstanding and at the same time uh, Diaby also coming in to play very, very outstanding. Dini gave the other assist to see that uh, the man uh, who came in as a substitute also got into, that is, uh, the uh, mix uh, to put things work well in the 61st minute. Uh, I'm talking about Bailey, uh, for that is the team of Aston Villa. Later on, Oli Watkins, the usual suspect, getting onto the score sheet. I'm asking myself, what is Arsenal waiting for to get this player? He is a good player. Oli Watkins, they have talked about him several times. Oli Watkins is better than the man by the names of uh, Gabriel Jesus. So get him, let him come and bang you the goals. You have the midfielders, you have the creativity, you have uh, chances to make sure that things work out. That's one thing for me I would request uh, to see that Arsenal has to put into consideration. Now, elsewhere, you did also see the same happening to the neighbors. That is another competitor, of <laughs> course, at Anfield, who all were fighting in for the top, and that is uh, Liverpool. Liverpool also suffered a single goal in the 14th minute by Eze, and later on, a good defending that came in from uh, the team of uh, Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace beat Liverpool one goal to nil, which also leaves them two points shy uh, behind the number one or the table toppers, Manchester City. This is another one. You didn't clock. What went wrong? <laughs> Um, uh, he's suffering 1-0 at Anfield uh, by Crystal Palace, um, uh, where, of course, um, uh, this was quite a very good one. And uh, in the previous uh, 13 games that uh, Liverpool has, of course, uh, had the cross, um, uh, the, the, they've had suffered, I think, uh, the biggest defeats have been 13, but out of them, I think um, uh, it is the one they suffered yesterday at home against Crystal Palace, I literally failed to realize what exactly went wrong but then. Uh, but I think uh, that goal coming through very early from uh, Crystal Palace Liverpool thought maybe uh, um, uh, there was still time and uh, they were going to I think uh, come in with a an equalizer and even score in a win which actually did not happen up to uh, there is uh, the 90th minute where they saw in uh, the final whistle going and it was a very huge defeat for them. Uh, this is something they didn't actually believe in. They, To me, they undermined that is Crystal Palace uh, because they've ever beaten uh, huge clubs. They've ever beaten uh, big dogs, I would say. And uh, they, they, they looked at Crystal Palace and an underdog and it costed them. Of course, the man by the name of Olivia Glasner was the man in charge of Crystal Palace as usual. And Jürgen Klopp, as the coach of uh, uh, the team of Liverpool, gave no way through to see that they penetrated. The star player was uh, the man Lema, who was uh, in solid and, of course, in that defense of uh, the team of Liverpool with Ederson and Klein all sitting uh, back three. It was why, uh, what they played, sitting with the three, uh, four, uh, two, one formation. Of course, very tough. Uh, you would see that uh, if this player, uh, the team goes in front, you will see around five players defending. That means that is the way. Michel was outstanding. Munoz was outstanding. Of course, uh, Hughes was also good. Old Olise, and not forgetting, of course, Ize. The person who was not impressive in that team, uh, who did not have a lot of impact, was Matate, who, of course, was uh, not so much in there. But names like Darwin Nunes for Team Liverpool, uh, Mo Salah, uh, Diaz, could not do anything much because even later on, the 
two were substituted, Nunes and uh, Diaz, because the impact was not there. One flank was a little bit also shaky. Uh, James Endo uh, tried a little bit. Uh, uh, James was not in the game to me. Uh, Mark Alistair played everything possible to make sure that things work his way, but still, Brandley could not really do much. I think he also has injury, according to uh, the report coming in from uh, that is their coach. And then uh, Konate and Vahil Van Dijk had a uh, good defending, but still couldn't make that go well. Robertson, as usual, with the deliveries and things worked uh, their way. Now, uh, West Ham lost to Fulham. It was two goals from that is uh, Pereira who scored those goals for that is the team of uh, uh, from Fulham. Andres Pereira got it 2-0 against West Ham. And that's how it is. Today, Chelsea will be welcoming Everton. And that is a game to watch at 10 p.m. Now, those are the games that we shall be having right there. Maybe unless otherwise. Susie, what is your parting words? Um, uh, Chelsea and uh, Everton, of course, uh, Chelsea have uh, had an unbeaten run against uh, Chelsea uh, way back from uh, 1994, quite a very huge one. And if you look at uh, the table standings, of course, uh, Chelsea uh, sits in position number nine and uh, Everton sits in the 16th position. Quite a very huge one. And literally, uh, they would be seeing to it that uh, if they can possibly win this, it can help them attain a better position in uh, there is, uh, the table standings. Okay, that's all what we had for you today.